Welcome to my screencast focusing on integration across the curriculum. By the end of it, you will have some idea as to how I can help you integrate ICT into your curriculum in a seamless holistic approach. I will offer examples from my classroom highlighting how students can improve their demonstrable learning outcomes within an existing curricular program. Students in my grade 6 class grow ever more capable of using new media. But for me, this isn't the most exciting part of the process of incorporating digital media into the school. The most exciting part of the new digital paradigm for educators is that the skills do not get taught in isolation, but to improve learning outcomes through integration. As when I recently had my class set up blogs to track a science experiment involving plants and altering variables to test the hypotheses on the importance of environmental variables. The blog was a tool necessary for recording the results of their experiments. Upon completion, students then produce voice threads of their work as a summative assessment. I conducted an experiment to find out what will change if you leave a plant in the sun and water it, and if you keep another in the dark and water it. This plant is called Bob, and it is out in the sun the whole day. This is the first week. These were then embedded on the student's personal blogs. They can do all of this, but they learned how through the regular coursework. Next, we moved on to a more cross-curricular project. Students studied urban green spaces in social studies. After discussing what we knew to check for prior knowledge, we then conducted research online. After that, we reflected on how well local parks served our needs before working in small groups to map out an ideal park for our local area. This setting was based on the idea that Chiba City was accepting proposals for a new park and we were design teams. The culminating assessment was tied to literacy. Formal, impersonal writing was used to produce short pieces explaining our parks. And these were then used as a springboard for pamphlets promoting the parks we designed collaboratively. You can see here we've got our waltz clearly laid out. The students know how long they're going to be working on this. And they actually used real-world examples of brochures to tune themselves in. I explained to them that it was very important that we were studying a pamphlet because it was an exciting new medium that lent itself to this writing style, putting it in a real-world context. I explained also that we'd base it on previous work because the brainstorming had been done. So now we're able to focus on development of new skills. Their friends then, in turn, assessed the record based on a rubric that I had produced and explained before the work had begun. This culminating assessment was undertaken independently. Having laid the groundwork, and developing an understanding of what parks need to meet the needs of the community, we were able to focus on both the language and design elements. Students were given the choice of either using MS Publisher to create them, to handcraft them, or some combination of both. In order to get the wider community involved, a school-wide vote was conducted for the park students wanted to go to the most based on a simple rubric. Which brings us back to grade 6, and all students who deserve an education tailored to their needs in today's world. 